Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my predictions for the IBHL applications course. So the exam's in a few days. I'm going to go through my top 10 topics, very similar to how I did my standard level AI predictions. Again, please check that out just above me. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go through my top 10 topics that are most likely to appear. And I've based this on the new papers that IB have released, as well as a specimen paper, and also using Revision Village and other tools out there. And my first one may be slightly surprising. I'm going to say that Euler's method, so either for integration or using it for couple differential equations, is going to appear on one of the papers. It lends itself very nicely to the applications course. It's quite new to this course, so I think this is something that is definitely going to appear. So make sure you know where the formulae are on your formula sheet and you know how to apply it. There are some great resources out there that can go through this with you. Number two is graph theory. So I think there'll be one question on this over the three papers. Could lend itself also to a paper three and make sure you know how to solve the Chinese postman problem, uh, depending on how many um, odd uh, indices, oh sorry, odd vertices that you've got, and also the traveling salesman problem. So the deleted vertex algorithm and also the nearest neighbor algorithm. Know how to use them, know how to use Kruskal's algorithm, know how to use Prim's algorithm. I think that would be a question, a fairly substantial question on this. My number three is eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And this can be used in two different ways. The IB release paper went on down the line of phase portraits and tied it in there. But there could also be a steady state matrix kind of question with eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which is similar to many questions on Revision Village. So make sure you're ready. Number four is working with distributions. So this is slightly different uh, compared to standard level. Um, so you can't just rely on your p-values, you need to know how to work out critical values, um, for example with z-testing, knowing how to use inverse norm. That's going to be very important for those harder questions. Number five is mathematical modeling. So make sure you're familiar with all the models we've seen, so sinusoidal models, nonlinear models as well, so how to work with power models, exponential logarithmic. I've got an excellent video, so please check it out, that goes through those kinds of models. And also scaling with logs. If you don't know what that is, please look it up before the exam. Number six is complex numbers. And I think this is going to come up in some kind of geometric interpretation. So they're going to have an argand diagram and you have to work out various different complex numbers using the different forms. Okay, I think this is going to come up probably again one question, but it's going to be a fairly sizable question. Number seven is vectors. So know how to work out a vector and dot product, know what they tell you about two vectors. But I think they're going to go down the line of a practical question, perhaps a shortest distance kind of question between the two vector equations. That would be my recommendation. Number eight, transformation matrices. Hasn't appeared on much in terms of what the IB has come out, but I'm going to put this in as my surprise topic that's going to appear. So know how to use the transformation matrices on your formula sheet and apply those reflections and rotations in a matrix format. And my last two topics, optimization and finance solver questions, um, are probably the crossover topics that are most suitable between standard level and higher level. So make sure that you can um, work out the maximum area or something, the minimum area or something, using differentiation, using double derivatives. Likewise, with a finance solver, so make sure you know how your finance solver works. What does the N stand for? What does the PY stand for? What does the PMT stand for? Make sure you know that. Again, I give that recommendation also in the standard level predictions as well. Okay, so what do you think? Again, please share in the comments below what you think. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of focus before the exams start at the end of the week. Right, I'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye for now.